Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have the third upgrade guide for Lost Caverns of Ixalan featuring Ahoy Maybes. This pirate kindred deck is looking to dump pirates into our grave, which we're going to use as a second hand, recovering our pirates on a pretty regular basis. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap the subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode, and maybe even earn yourself a little shout out in one of our future videos. This video is dedicated to Captain Zone. Captain, you rock. The direction we took this deck is the direction that you asked for in the Velasa Raptor deck tech. So we're not really focused on removing the finality counters. Uh, we're more so just focused on the pirate kindred sort of theme. Though we do have one single instance of a card in the deck that can remove the counters just because it is still good to have a little bit, but it's definitely not our main focus. As always, we're swapping out 10 cards and leaving the mana base untouched. We're kind of leaning into the Kindred Pirates, like I said. We're going to go over some ways to skate around those finality counters, more so in the Honorable Mentions section than the main deck. But with that being said, let's get to what didn't make that cut. Topping the list is the Azure Fleet Admiral, which introduces Monarch to the game and can't be blocked by creatures that the Monarch controls. So for 4 mana, we sometimes get an evasive 3-3 that wants us to lose the Monarch so it can kind of be unblockable and get it back. It's really slow, honestly. I mean, sure, we're going to get the... we're going to get card draw the turn it comes into play guaranteed. And kind of every turn thereafter. But I don't think that we want to intentionally let other people hit us in order to hit them back. And that kind of feels like what the Azure Fleet Admiral is doing. And I'm just not for it. Also, Monarch's a little group hug. Not like crazy group hug, obviously. But, you know, it's also not the main focus of the deck. Either way, Azure Fleet Admiral, get out of here. Following up the Admiral is a Captain. Captain Lenary Storm, to be specific, she's not a bad card, and if uh, she manages to stick around, could ramp us with some treasures. I don't think they're going to stick around long term, though, if we're leaning more heavily into the finality counter aspect of the deck, right? Removing the counters to ensure we can always recur her. 100% we'll get to stay, but we're not doing that, right? We're just leaning into Pirate Kindred, so they're gone. Uh, this is actually the second deck, I think now, where I've removed Commander Sphere. Uh, much like the last one, it's a 3-cost mana rock. It's just a little too slow, despite the fact that it is a nice little fixer for a 3-color deck. I just think we have enough mana rocks without it. And it's, uh, it's a little slow with 3 mana, so it's gone. Following the sphere is a board wipe in the form of bouncing creatures. Evacuation would return all creatures to their owner's hands. As a bunch of swashbuckling pirates, we definitely have a sub-theme of stealing our opponent's creatures to use against them, and this directly works against that strat, right? These, these creatures that we've stolen are going to get bounced back to our opponent's hand. They're the ones who own them. Uh, so... Evacuation. Just not sticking around. Speaking of stealing our opponent's creatures, we actually have Hostage Taker as a cut. Uh, you know, once again, if we were really dealing with the finality counter abuse, 100% gets to stick around. Leaning into strictly Pirate Kindred, I'm okay with the, uh, the Hostage Taker kind of just taking a dive here. They're gone. Kari Zev, Skyship Raider, follows up our Hostage Taker, and this Raider creates a monkey on attack. Uh, but aside from the fact it is a pirate, it doesn't really do a whole lot for us. First Strike Menace on a 1-3 isn't that great. Yeah, maybe we get in for like a little bit of chip damage, but you know, whatever, whatever. The 2-1 Red Monkey is just a monkey. It's not a monkey pirate. If it were a monkey pirate, I'd like this card a little bit more. And we lose that token at the end of, uh, at the end of combat. So again, just not really... Not feeling it. Shared Animosity is up next, and it powers up our crew, but leaves their booties open to be plundered. Uh, you know, we're definitely here to play aggressively with our creatures, but we need them to stick around because we're not abusing those finality counters. Uh, so we don't want to leave them booties open. This is only increasing power, but not toughness. So Shared Animosity, you gotta go. 
Spectral Sailor follows up that animosity and is here for some card draw, but we don't really want to pay four mana per card that we draw. We have cheaper ways of doing so. You know, aside from that, I mean, like, it's a flashable flying 1-1 one, one for one. So it's, it's not bad, but again, I just, we have, there are better pirates out there. Nothing more really need be said. Stormfleet Navigator rounds out our crew, and uh, they're out of here because they let our opponents draw cards. It's group hug, and we're not here for that. We're here for us, right? We want to hug ourselves. Self-hug. Last up is the Wayfarer's Bobble. It's actually a pretty decent way to ramp out with some basic lands early on, right? Especially turn one, Wayfarer's Bobble, turn two, you crack it. But again, we are trying to be a little aggressive, and the fact that this is three mana to go get a single land onto the battlefield tapped, you know, the fact that we're not in green makes it kind of nice, but not nice enough. So it's gone. With those cards out of the way, let's see what we've slotted in to replace them. Topping that list is Kindred Discovery, which belongs in every Kindred blue deck, gaining us cards on ETB and on attack. We're going to have a full grip basically at all times, and if we have too many cards in hand at the end step, we could just ditch a pirate that we want to reanimate with our commander. No harm, no foul. Following up our discovery is Charter Course. To draw two cards and discard one, that is assuming of course that we haven't yet attacked this turn. If we have to discard a card, it's going to be a pirate. We're going to reanimate that pirate with our commander. We're good to go. Power Conduit is a great way to remove finality counters and replace them with plus one plus one counters. It's something I'd like to see more of in the deck, but most of these types of effects just aren't very efficient. Right, some of them are one time use, some of them cost a bit too much mana. We'll get more into it in the honorable mentions like I said before. So with that being said, we'll keep moving. Moving into our creatures, which make up the majority of the additions, we have Zephyr Singer, who wants us to Convoke to add some flying counters to some non-flying pirates, giving them some evasion to get in for that damage and stick around for the long term. Malcolm, a Loring Scoundrel, is up next, and we're looking to get them out early and attack with them often. The first three attacks are going to fuel our commander, and the fourth attack on is going to let us cheat out some powerful pirates. Or, you know, just some powerful spells in general. Glinthorn Buccaneer follows up that scoundrel and can fuel our commander and leans into the discard synergy that we've already seen, dealing one damage to each opponent when we discard a card. Forerunner of the Coalition is up next and is a pirate tutor when another pirate ETBs, each opponent loses a life. And with us cheating out pirates left and right, the damage should add up pretty quickly. Captain Vargas Wrath is here for the late game, and we may have need to recast our commander a few times. When they attack, all of our pirates are getting a big boost for each time we've cast our commander, acting as a nice pirate lord. Breach's Eager Pillager is putting in some work to ramp us, lower the defense of an opponent, and give us an impulse draw. They don't have to be a part of the attack that triggers this, they just have to be on the board. And we're happy to let them take us straight to Value Town. Last up, the Golden Nightmare of the deck. It's Roaming Throne. A 4-4 for 4, which is going to double up all of our pirate triggers. Doubling triggers is a good way to run away with the game, and cheating out multiple creatures every turn will make it impossible for most of our opponents to keep up. As mentioned earlier, we have some honorable mentions, cards that weren't exactly budget friendly, and in the case of a few, would have us lean too far into the removing of finality counters, a strat that Captain Zone didn't want to see. Topping that list is everyone's favorite goblin pirate, Dockside Extortionist, who could ramp us twice at a minimum in this deck. You know, they're 70 bucks, and they definitely can't fall into a non-budget friendly bucket, so that's why they're not in the deck. But uh, if you have a copy, you know, as always, they're great. And they work even better here because they are, in fact, a pirate. Dramatist's Puppet is a budget-friendly card, but it's only a one-time use to remove a finality counter. Power Conduit is a stronger option, which is why it got to be in, and Dramatist's Puppet did not. Pharopede is another budget creature that is unblockable and when it deals damage can remove a counter. 
Power Conduit again feels like a stronger option since we could always tap it in response to the removal, and it costs less overall. Hex Parasite feels like an expensive option for what we'll be using it for. Sitting around 750, we could pay one and a black or one and two life to remove a finality counter and pump it up for the turn. Uh, so definitely like decent if we had some more life gainy shenanigans happening in here. You know, the ability to remove multiple um, finality counters in a single turn could be powerful. Uh, but just, just not what we're doing here. Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer is up next and again just isn't budget friendly. A little bit of treasure and some impulse draw that leans into playing our opponent's cards is great, but you know, it does sit at $45, so you know, basically, whole budget gone. We have Soul Diviner, so it follows up our lovely little pilfer and is, um, honestly, it was, it was my second choice, I would say, to be honest, right? It was between this and Power Conduit. Power Conduit won out for two reasons, right? Power Conduit doesn't require covered mana, making it much easier to cast. And it's not a creature, right? Soul Diviner cannot tap right away. We don't have a ton of haste enablers. That being said, if I were to add an 11th card, sticking to like kind of being budget friendly, Soul Diviner would be it. Last up for our creatures is another budget option to remove those pesky counters and it's Thrill Parasite costing us two extra life compared to Soul Diviner. Clock Spinning is budget friendly but costs four mana in order to keep it, you know, kind of going. One to cast a spell, three for the buyback. Uh, so just not really mana efficient. That's it's not really being added to the deck but definitely an option if you think you're going to have the mana necessary. Fate Transfer could let us move one of those uh, finality counters to a creature in opponent controls. Not exactly reputable, you know, hence I didn't add it to the deck. But, you know, oh, this is going to go on like your key creature that's not your commander and then I'm going to destroy it. Well, now it's exiled and my creature could be recurred once again. Last up is Sundial of the Infinite. We have a handful of effects that let us steal creatures and whatnot just until the end of the turn. And with the trigger to give them back, you know, on the stack, we just send out the infinite and the turn. We get to keep those things forever. Huzzah for us. But guys, that is the upgrade guide and honorable mentions. You know, were there cards that I cut that you think should have stayed? Cards that I added that you don't think belong? Do you think we should have focused more heavily on the finality counter removal in the main deck? Do you think that sticking to kind of pirate kindred is like the main focus? makes a lot of sense you know what are, what are your thoughts here let me know in the comment section down below and if you uh want to sling spells you know need help with building your own decks want to talk about anime or gunpla consider joining the discord uh but until next time good luck with your builds